Okay, so now we are on question two, Newton's law. It says a toy train of mass 2 kg and a toy car of mass 1 kg are attached by a light inextensible string. The car train system is pulled up a rough slope at a constant velocity by the rope with a force T2 acting on the rope at a degree angle to the inclined plane. So as we can see on the diagram here, it is being indicated. Then 2.1 simply says explain the term net force or resultant force. So you can explain either one of the two there. So uh, what is net force? We say net force acting on your body is the vector sum is the vector sum of two or more forces acting on that body right so this is how we define net force now you can either define that one so we know that uh, the way we define resultant force is to say this is a, a single vector that has the same effect as two or more vectors acting together. Acting together right so that's it so you can either define net force or you can define a resultant force either way you could have got uh, your two marks right then uh, draw a label free body diagram for the toy train so uh, we are given five marks that means five forces so as we can see we have our incline there so we can start by faintly showing our incline remember this incline you are going to erase after you have drawn so it's just uh, there for the purpose of uh, clearly showing all your forces so we have our big black dot to indicate the object the train and then uh, let's now have our normal force we know that it must be perpendicular to the inclined plane and then uh, i always prefer to resolve uh, my free body diagram to fg perpendicular and fg parallel so fg parallel is always sliding down the incline and then uh, let me make the dot even bigger because i'm still gonna uh, put a lot of forces in there So the only force that is acting up the incline there, as we can see, is that uh, tension force, which is being pulled at an angle of 10 degrees. So we can just draw it exactly as it appears there. And then uh, down the slope, we have tension T1. And then we also have the frictional force. Right. So there we go. This time it's only a matter of labeling. So this is our normal force. This is our FG perpendicular. And this is our FG parallel. This is a tension T1. This is tension T2. And then here we have a, the kinetic frictional force. So when they counter the forces, remember FG parallel and FG perpendicular are the components of the same force FG. So this is one two three four five so i have four uh, five forces that means uh, five marks now if you prefer not to resolve the fg perpendicular and fg parallel still uh, we know that you can indicate your fg just directly like that going downwards so straight just like that and you you indicate that this is fg that's if you don't prefer resolving to fg parallel and fg perpendicular but otherwise you can just leave it like that my reason for resolving i've already stated it in the previous uh, questions it is just to make sure that i am able to calculate everything uh, and then i i can clearly see all the forces that are acting on the object right so others can e can even further resolve the t the t2 here into a uh, fx and fy so whereby your fx would be going in this direction and then your fy would be going up the incline like that right or 
along uh, along a straight line with FN. So if you were to resolve uh, the tension since it's being acted at an angle, that means this would be uh, TY and then this would be TX like that. So also you can resolve the components of the force because your force here is being acted at an angle, right? Okay, so now uh, let's move to 2.3. It says the tension force T2 is increased to 20 Newton, causing the system to accelerate up the slope. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the system if the friction force acting on the car is 1.5 Newton and there on the chain is 2 Newtons, right? So uh, let me start by erasing this. And then in order to calculate this, we understand that this is a system. So to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration, we have to apply simultaneous equations because we know the acceleration of the car will be the same as the acceleration of the train. So in this case, you have to go back to the fact that every time you are given a, a system of objects, you need to make sure that you understand all the forces acting on both the objects individually. Right. So if we can show the forces acting on the car we have our normal force and then we have our fg perpendicular and then also our fg parallel and then we also know that there's a frictional force and then obviously we can see our tension t1 there right so let's indicate we have a normal force we have a fg perpendicular we have fg parallel that direction and then here we have the kinetic frictional force right so this is the object right here and then this is our tension t1 but then when it comes to the chain uh, we've already uh, shown all the forces acting on the chain it is uh, that tension t2 it is the fn it is the fg perpendicular and then uh, in that direction it is uh, the fg parallel and then we also have tension uh, which is the same as the tension on T1 here. And then also we also have air uh, friction, right? So this is FK. This is FG parallel. This is our tension. So in this case, the tension is acting in that direction. And then down here, we have our FG perpendicular. This here is our tension T2. And then right here, we have our normal force. So we can start by calculating for the car, by indicating for the car, these are the forces that we should consider. Remember, we are only considering horizontal forces since they are the one doing work on the object. So we'll just say F net is equals to MA. And then uh, our positive direction is up the slope since we can see the force here is pulling these two objects or this uh, system up the incline. Right. So that means uh, for the car, we can indicate that we have a uh, force T1 minus FG parallel minus FK. And then that is equals to mass times acceleration. Now we don't have the value for T1. But then FG parallel can be broken down to MG sine theta and then minus FK is equals to MA. At this point, it's just a matter of substituting what we have. So what is uh, the mass of the car? We are told that it is 1 kg. So it's 1 times 9.8. And then sine, remember the theta here for FG parallel indicates the theta of the incline. So the angle of the incline. And then the FK, when we read here, they said of the system if the friction force acting on the car is 1.5 so the friction acting on the car is 1.5 and then here we have one multiplied by the acceleration now if you can punch all this into your calculator negative one times 9.8 sine 20 degrees minus 1.5 then you will find that your t1 it is t1 minus so that will give us negative 4.85 and then is equals to one times a is just a let me make t1 the subject of the formula this will be t1 is equals to a plus 4.85 and then i will call this equation number one now at this point let me then uh, calculate for the train right so f net for the train again i have f net is equals to ma 
and then considering this if i were to uh, resolve the tension t2 into components i do understand that i would have a uh, tx and then also i would have what ty up there so remember t2 is not a horizontal force which is why i need to resolve this so that i have tx here being the horizontal force right so it's horizontal it's it's parallel actually i want it to be parallel to the surface right so the t2 here is not parallel to the surface i need a component that will be parallel to the surface which is tx so this being the positive direction this will become Okay, so for that one, I have F net is equals to MA. So let me indicate it for the train. And then uh, this will be said it's TX minus uh, FG parallel minus FK. And then minus T1 is equals to MA. So this will give us T2 cos theta. And then minus MG sine uh, theta minus fk minus t1 is equals to ma now let's substitute uh, they say tension force t2 is increased to 20 newtons so we have 20 cos 10 degrees because this is uh, the angle in which the force has been applied and then our mass is 2 kg times 9.8 sine now be careful of this data the data for fg parallel indicates the data of the incline right so 20 degrees minus fk they said uh, and that on the train is two newtons the kinetic frictional force so we have t my two minus t1 is equals to two times a now if you just punch all of this into your calculator you will get 10 point nine nine two six so i'm just gonna round off to four decimal places minus t1 is equals to 2a again let me make t1 the subject of the formula this is 10.9926 minus 2a is equals to t1 and then we will call this equation number two right so when we have equation number one and equation number two that means at this point now we can equate the two equations since they both have the same subject of the formula t1 so t1 is an expression a plus 4.85 and t1 also has an expression 10.9926 minus 2a so that means i can equate equation one and equation two by simply saying uh, a plus 4.85 is equals to 10.9926 minus 2a so everything with a on the left hand side this is 3a and then this will be 10.9926 minus 4.85 right and then this is 3a is equals to uh, 6.9926 one four two six if we subtract that and then divided by three divided by three my acceleration is now equals to 2.05 meters per second rounded off to two decimal places right and that's how you were supposed to go about answering that question there okay then uh, we have 2.4 which is saying halfway up the slope the string t1 breaks and the car rolls down the slope does the friction force on the chain increase decrease or remain the same while still moving up the slope explain the answer right so at this point this is what we need to consider here so they're saying does the friction on the chain increase decrease or remain the same now the frictional force uh, we know that it's fk is equal to mu k times the normal force right now if uh, the string t1 has to break you will realize that string t1 has no effect on uh, the normal force because when we draw the free body diagram here this is our normal force and then down here we have our fg perpendicular and then if we are to resolve t2 to fy or ty and then also tx we will soon realize that uh, in order to find our fn we'll say fn is plus ty or fy is equals to fg perpendicular 
then our normal force would would calculate our normal force by saying fg perpendicular minus fy now if t1 breaks here the equation still remains the same because t1 never affected the normal force but then we know that fk is dependent on the normal force so in other words the normal force does not change whether t1 is present or absent the normal force does not change and if we say frictional force depends on the normal force that means if normal force remains the same if in kinetic friction must remain the same right so in other words we will say remains the same and then our reason is what uh, we'll say the normal force remains the same Therefore, uh, we know that frictional force is dependent or frictional force is directly proportional to the normal force. To the normal force. According to uh, that formula there, Fk is equals to mu k times n. Now we know the only the only time we can change the coefficient of kinetic friction is by simply changing the whole surface here the material of the surface so because we are not changing the material of the surface mu k forever remains constant but then now we are saying the normal force also remains constant that means fk has to remain constant because it is dependent on the normal force right so i hope that makes sense and then that's how you were supposed to tackle this question for 15 months awesome